got to have thread locker or else stuff falls off, like your wheels fall off, and then it goes bad. Well, hello there. How's everybody doing? My name is Bobby Watts, and welcome to my new YouTube series, Nuts and Bolts. Yes, literally, this is Nuts and Bolts, where we are going to be talking about the nitty gritty all the way down to the hardware of the mechanical world. And I feel like there's just not enough of this information out there. And I've been doing, you know, mechanic, I've been playing and designing and building mechanical structures, creations, uh, vehicles, whatever it might be for literally all of my life, starting with Erector sets. And I've picked up a lot of skills along the way that I feel like might be able to be useful to you. Um, maybe you work in the UAV industry, maybe you enjoy the radio controlled hobby, cars, boats, planes, helicopters. Uh, whatever it might be, automotive, design, CNC, whatever it might be, I hope to be taking a deep dive into various aspects of the mechanical world. Um, and I, I'm really excited for this new series. I think it's going to be great. Um, I've received a degree in mechanical engineering and I didn't learn a lot of this stuff, to be honest. Like, I, I really didn't. We went over high level views and, and concepts and theories, but we never really got into the nitty gritty. We never got to assemble. We never got to build things uh, a, a little bit, but not enough here, not enough. So my hope here is to have this be a really nice deep dive, a thorough deep dive week after week where we can talk about the mechanical world. But before I get into that, um, just starting out here, I'm just trying to get this channel going. I've had it going for a while, but if you could hit that little like button down there, just smash it. Smash that like button down there. That would be a huge help to me. I very much appreciate it. This is YouTube exclusively, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do on this platform. So the first episode we're doing here, we're hitting the ground running with Threadlocker, or also known as Loctite. So Loctite is the name brand. So just like a tissue and Kleenex, we have Threadlocker and Loctite. So I will be using them interchangeably. Um, so I know it's been around since maybe the 50s or 60s, and it's used mainly for metal screws or metal fasteners into a metal receptacle. So like a, a, a block, an aluminum block of some sort, a steel block of some sort. So we're only using it when it comes to uh, inserting a fastener into a metal hole. Um, if it comes to uh, metal into plastic, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But right now with Threadlocker, we're only talking about metal to metal. And this is used in many different industries, everything from cinematography to machining, automotive, uh, hobby, boating, whatever it might be. And it's basically just going to be used to prevent these fasteners from backing out, mainly due to vibration. So if you have a motor or an engine of some sort, high spinning, rotor heads, tail rotors, shafts, uh, whatever it might be, Loctite is going to be used to make sure it stays tight. Now with Threadlocker, we have four different types and they're separated by colors. Now, I should say there's probably a lot of types, but the main types of Loctite we look at are just by colors. There's the weakest, which is purple. We then have blue, which is medium strength, red, which is high strength, and green, which can wick into threads. We'll get more into that. But for me personally, I mainly just use uh, blue, red, and green. So let's dive into that right now and see how these various thread lockers are used in the mechanical world. So let's go over the type of Loctites that we've got here. Um, and once again, Loctite, thread locker, I'll use it interchangeably all day long. So here we've got the biggest bottle of them all. And this is blue thread locker, blue Loctite. This one happens to be 242. Um, so this is medium strength and it's just a great overall thread locker for many applications. Uh, it's easily removable, but yet holds strong. So I would say 90% of the time when I'm applying Loctite to anything, it's going to be blue thread locker. Um, so that's why it's biggest bottle. Uh, moving over, we've got uh, red, red Loctite. And red Loctite or red thread locker is really the best for any bolt that you can't afford to have come loose. So if it's a critical bolt and a bolt that you're really not gonna be taking out too much, then you're gonna use red. So this is in a red tube. This is also in a red tube. So just be careful when you're buying it. Just make sure that you grab the right one because um, it can be blue Loctite, but in a red bottle. So just be careful. Uh, and then next we have green thread locker. Green is more of a wicking sort of thread locker. So uh, used in two main applications that I've seen. Uh, number one is like if you forget to put a uh, thread locker on a nut and a bolt, you can just drip it on the threads and it'll wick right in. Uh, without having to remove it. Uh, the second purpose would be using it for a bearing and a bearing block, uh, but we'll get to that. Uh, and then lastly, we have some Gorilla Super Glue, which we'll show you. It's a little secret. 
Um, so let's start with the most common, which is the blue thread locker. Uh, so blue 242. So one thing I did want to mention was the fact that uh, I grabbed some bolts here. Uh, these happen to be from a DJI product. And uh, you'll see this a lot sometimes in the camera world, sometimes in the automotive world. You'll buy a bolt and it already has a little bit of blue stuff on it. Well, that's blue Loctite, blue thread locker. So if you buy a bolt that already has thread locker on there, then you're good to go. You don't need to apply anything. So I just wanted to include this just so you could kind of see um, see how bolts can come sometimes already with it on there, ready to go. Um, saves you from having to bust out the blue Loctite bottle. But for this application, for this instance, let me show you a great example of how we would use blue thread locker. Uh, so these are some parts from a big drone that we manufacture. And so basically we just have two steel bolts that are going to be going into an aluminum block. Uh, we're going to be bolting a carbon fiber piece right here. Uh, we're going to be putting these screws in. So this is a great application for blue thread locker because we don't want this bolt, these bolts to come loose. So just real easily, we are going to lay the bolt sideways and we are going to apply thread locker just like that. I seem to apply them right to the ends of the bolts. That's what seems to work best for me. Uh, and then I will uh, put it through and basically tighten. Nothing too crazy, nothing, um, you know, there, there's really no wrong way to use it, but for blue Loctite, this is just how we do it. Now you can also insert the Loctite in the threads first if you wanted to. So if you had a really thin, um, I don't know, Allen wrench or something like that, I mean, we could go ahead and I've got a little teeny guy right here and I could put some thread lock on here and we could add it to the threads like this. So no big deal. You can add it however you want to. Blue Loctite does not discriminate. And we're just gonna take our wrench and then we would tighten up. Uh, and then once this is tight in here, then this is good to go. And I believe they say Loctite cures in about 24 hours. But in my experience, as soon as you tighten it, you're good to go. Um, now with blue Loctite, another thing to keep in mind is if you're removing bolts a lot, then you're going to experience kind of Loctite caking up and building up, and that's fine. You can just re -lock, reapply Loctite, move forward with your assembly and tighten it up. Now, if your bolts are really greasy, I would definitely recommend uh, dipping the bolts in rubbing alcohol of some sort, cleaning them with a towel before you apply the Loctite, because that's gonna allow it to stick uh, better. And this is for any of the thread locks that we're gonna be mentioning. The next in this case would be uh, red. So let's say, that this is a absolutely critical screw. Let's say we cannot afford to have this screw come loose. Well, then what I'm going to recommend is that you use red Loctite. So we put a little bit right here, and then we're just going to tighten the uh, bolt right here into the, uh, into the shaft here. Then I will go ahead and tighten it. And in this case, I could use some sort of a, a wrench or um, one-way bearing or something like that to grab this shaft if I really wanted to crank on this tight. But red Loctite in this case will not come off. I guarantee it, it's not coming off. Now, if you get to the point where this actually has to come apart, let's say something happened, it has to come apart, what I'd recommend is you use a heat gun or a lighter or a torch if you have to, whatever you need to do in order to heat this guy up. Once the red Loctite gets uh, some heat, then it's going to dissolve and loosen up, then you can break it free. So if you've red Loctited something and it's not coming out, just apply some heat and you're gonna be fine. It'll come right out. So moving on, we have green Loctite. Now, in all honesty, I really don't use green Loctite hardly at all. Um, I had to buy this to do this video, so I really don't use it. But two main applications I've seen for green Loctite. So the first would be wicking. So let's just say if I had this part right here and I didn't have any thread locker on it, but I don't want to take it apart for whatever reason, then all you have to do is just add a little bit of green Loctite right there and it'll wick in. It'll wick right into the threads and then your bolt and your nut are now Loctited. So that's one great use case for green Loctite. And the other one, which I do use a, a lot actually, when I'm doing these types of parts, is I will apply it to the inside of a bearing block. So in this case, we have an aluminum bearing block. And so I'll apply it to the inside of the bearing block. And then when I push the bearing in with a press, 
then that green Loctite is really going to uh, wedge itself in between the steel bearing and the aluminum bearing block, and that'll allow it not to come out. Now they even have a primer for green Loctite. So if you're, if you're doing a lot of work with maybe bearings, bearing blocks, shafts fitting inside of bearings, things like that, green Loctite is really your friend. So when we would press this in with a press, uh, this would just go in nice and tight and the green Loctite would hold it in place. So that's a great use case for green Loctite. So something to mention at this time is I grabbed a little nylock nut. So these are a nut that has a little bit of nylon right there. And anytime you have a nylock nut or anything that's not metal, you don't want to use thread locker. So in this case, the nylock takes the place of the thread locker. Um, so anytime you see a nylock nut, do not use Loctite, which brings me to another situation. So in this case, I've got a plastic gear uh, this is a transmission shaft and transmission gear for a uh, radio controlled helicopter. And what the supplier did was they have some holes in here. So you can see I've lined the hole up, but the supplier, the manufacturer includes this little screw, um, just this little screw here that's going to go through the metal and then it's going to thread into the plastic. So in this case, we do not want to use Loctite because Loctite will actually, over time, I'm told, uh, it'll actually break down the plastic depending on what kind of material it is. So in this case, we actually want to use super glue or CA. So anytime we've got metal into plastic, so a metallic bolt uh, into plastic, we're actually going to use CA. So, so CA, cyanoacrylate, or super glue. So in this case, we have uh, Gorilla Glue. Um, it really works well. This is the best that I've found. Um, I've used, I'm using this on everything nowadays. Um, so what I'd recommend is you just put a little drop on. Let's see, let's get it out. There we go. Just a little drop like that. Put a little drop on it, and then we would go ahead and insert it into the shaft, and then we would just tighten. And then you can just be absolutely sure that as this thing is spinning 10,000, 12,000 RPMs, uh, you can be sure that your bolt is not going to back out because it is uh, properly secured into the plastic using super glue. So those are some use cases of various thread lockers and super glue. So what'd you think? Thread locker, huh? Who would have ever known? I mean, it's so important. Literally, if you don't have thread locker on the most important bolt in your assembly, in your vehicle, in your structure, it could lead to a catastrophic failure, literally to not having thread locker on one bolt. It's just how things go sometimes. So be sure to put that thread locker on anytime you have a metal to metal screw. And if you have a metal screw going into plastic, even 3D print, this is huge. I didn't even throw that in there. If you're going into ABS or PLA, some sort of 3D printed plastic, and you're threading in metal threads into a 3D printed part, throw some of that CA cyanoacrylate, as we learned, or also known as super glue. Uh, throw some super glue on the threads before you tighten. Be sure not to over tighten so you're not stripping it out. Let that cure and they'll stay in there even with excessive vibrations going on. So that was as much as I know about thread locker, super important. Uh, be sure to use it on your next job, on your next application, and hopefully now you have a little bit of a better understanding just about how it works. So that's all I have for this week for uh, nuts and bolts. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, once again, please, I'd prefer if you could uh, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. I have a lot of these planned, dozens and dozens of these planned right now without any help. But if you have an idea for something that you think would be good on this new show, then hit me up. You can email me anytime at bobby at wattsinnovations.com or you can shoot me a message or just drop a comment below. Very lastly, all the tools and the uh, thread locker and all the hardware that I use today, I have the, a little link to them right below here. You can check them out on Amazon and get them on Prime. And uh, you can have this now in your toolbox and in your arsenal. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to the next one. Have a good one.